Thank you very much. Uh, I am very grateful to Dr. Chawla and Shalini for including this topic and including me in this wonderful academic, uh, you know, feast, I would say. So my topic is obstructive sleep apnea and uh, the link or the, you know, it's a bi-directional problem. And we have worked quite a lot on this subject and particularly we see quite a few cases of OSA in our OPD as well as the people come to our institution. And that is a major problem, which is a treatable condition. And the treatable, if you are suspecting it in quite a few people. Next slide, please. Will you please? Uh, uh, yeah. What is obstructive sleep apnea? Repeated partial or complete obstruction of upper airway during sleep. OSC is a highly prevalent disorder which affects several body systems and most dangerous complication of untreated OSA primarily include three systems, metabolic, cardiovascular and cerebrovascular. Next slide. Next slide. Please. Yeah. The risk of OSA is high. Next slide. Sleep apnea can lead to so many complications. What causes sleep apnea is a smoking, obesity, increased age, endocrine and metabolic, male genders, anatomic abnormalities of upper airways, family history of sleep problems, alcohol and sedative use. So there are many areas that need to be intervened before we start treating sleep apnea because these are all risk factors. Next slide, please. Now, complications are metabolic, cardiovascular, behavioral, and other. The metabolic are insulin resistance, metabolic syndrome, weight gain, nocturia, sexual dysfunction, cardiovascular, hypertension, rhythm abnormalities, cerebrovascular events, MI, heart failure. And the behavioral, cognitive and memory problems, irritability, concentration difficulties, premature aging and depression, an excessive daytime sleepiness, fatigue related accidents and headaches. So you realize that obstructive sleep apnea has so many problems that can be addressed if you treat obstructive sleep apnea. Next slide, please. Now, what causes what? It's like a chicken and egg. Whether OSA comes first or type 2 diabetes comes first. It is a bi-directional relationship. Next slide, please. Now, OSA leads to diabetes. A number of studies, including longitudinal studies and analysis have shown that OSA is a risk factor independent of obesity and other risk factors. Now, you realize if the patient is even not obese or even he doesn't have any abdominal obesity, he can still have OSA, which itself is an independent risk factor. Insulin resistance, pancreatic beta cell functions uh, affected, which causes glucose intolerance and type 2 diabetes. Now, this could be sympathetic activation, HPA axis alterations, oxidative stress, activation of inflammatory cytokines, particularly interleukin-6, and tumor necrosis factor alpha, changes in adiponectin profiles, and that can lead to so many problems. So this is a cause of multiple problems which can come from OSA. Next slide, please. Does diabetes lead to OSA? A meta-analysis has confirmed that moderate to severe OSA is associated with a greater risk of diabetes when compared with the absence of it. The, the shared risk factors are lipid profile, high waist circumference, smoking, diabetes 2 leads to weight gain and autonomic neuropathy and causes insulin resistance, independent predictor sleep apnea. Next slide, please. So you realize that there are multiple factors and therefore the relationship is bi-directional. It is interesting that both type 2 diabetes are associated with similar comorbidity, which include hypertension, cardiovascular disease, dyslipidemia, 
and chronic kidney disease. Many of the ongoing trials focusing on whether the having OSA and type 2 diabetes is associated with greater severity is going on in multiple centers. So their interest in this area has increased enormously because this is a treatable condition. Get it very clear. Please remember one of the commonest cause of accelerated hypertension, which is non-responsive. You call the patient multiple times, his systolic pressure just doesn't come down with all the manipulating efforts to reduce the blood pressure. Resistant hypertension, you have to suspect OSA. And if OSA is treated, resistant hypertension comes under control and the associated risk factors. Next slide, please. Next slide. The effect of OSA on type 2 diabetes. What happens to type 2 diabetes? Who's got OSA? Next slide. Several cross-sectional studies demonstrate a link between OSA and glycemic measures like HbA1c, fasting glucose level, variation plasma glucose level, glycemic variability, which is more dangerous than elevated sugar. If the blood sugar in the morning is 70, evening is 300, it is worse than having a consistent blood sugar of 200. Particularly type 2 diabetes in Indian phenotype with the abdominal obesity, which is also known as thin fat Indian. These are the people, the glycemic variability is more dangerous to produce complication. Now, OSA severity increases insulin resistance. And there is a simple method known as apnea hypopnea index. If that index is high, then the patient is considered severely insulin resistant. And this is why you have to do this apnea hypopnea index, which is a very simple test. Next slide, please. Southeast Asian studies, <clears throat> a linear correlation exists between OSA parameters and insulin resistance defined causal risk link between OSA and insulin resistance. Higher the insulin resistance, that means the patient has got obstructive sleep apnea, we are missed. Treat obstructive sleep apnea, his insulin resistance will come down, particularly in the South, Southeast Asian, our Indian people and South Asians. This is particularly a big risk factor. Next slide, please. Approach towards a patient with OSA and type 2 diabetes, how do you approach? Next slide, please. First, convince the patient. Comprehensive sleep evaluation, history taking, analysis of signs and symptoms of OSA, analysis of risk factor for OSA, examination of upper airway anatomy. Now, pre-test questionnaire, which is whether he snores loudly. Please remember one thing. All sleep apnea patients need not snore. And all people who snore may not have sleep apnea. So, snoring can be a familiar trait. It may not be associated, but snoring is important. And you feel tired after sleep. The patient feel, says that I'm never fresh, sir. When I get up in the morning, I'm never fresh. I my Basically, sleep, sleep is supposed to restore your cellular function, your metabolic function, your brain function. It should give you rest to all the cells. It does not happen. The patient never gets up fresh. He feels as if his sleep is incomplete and he does not feel energetic to work. Now, either there is an observed apnea. Now, this is brought to your notice by the spouse. You know, sir, when he sleeps in the night while snoring, suddenly he stops snoring. Suddenly he just stops and I wake up because of he stops snoring and I feel he is not alive. Now, this eyewitness examination by the spouse is very important. There is a high blood pressure, BMI more than 35, age more than 50, neck circumference more than 40, neck girth. Now, neck girth in some good singers like Bhimsan Joshi was always high, but that was because of Riyaz. But people with a very thick neck, and that is one very big risk factor, male gender, and there is a score of 3 to 5 moderate, 6 to 8 is considered high risk score. And these are the people 
to be subjected for sleep study. Next slide, please. So diagnosis OSA diabetic patient is type one study is usually costly, cumbersome, requires hospital stay for one night, requires resource of a rich setup to conduct the study. Now this is not really required of poly so, uh, somnography or with a multiple 12 lead EEG and that is done in the hospital. You have to stay for one night, expensive. Best is a sleep apnea study done at home. You call up the people, they come home and they to put one oxygen saturation meter. Other is the leads on the chest. And this is a very simple test. Next slide, please. Can be done at home. It's an alternative type 3 device, home-based respiratory monitoring diagnostic device. The number of channels 4 to 7 are, are increased used to in a practice as well as research and supported by American Association of Sleep Medicine. Next slide, please. Can be done at home. Very simple gadget. Apnea air study in diabetes patients. Diabetes and OSA present similar symptoms. The IDF recommendation, screening people with type 2 diabetes. IDF recommends a practical approach, which is so to investigate these people, classical symptoms such as witness apnea, heavy snoring or sleepiness, daytime somnolence. Daytime somnolence is very important. And believe me, it is one of the most important risk factor. Daytime a structure questionnaire stop bang is used to in the first stage. Those with a high risk undergo a second stage with the overnight evaluation. Those people who are diagnosed can be subjected to overnight testing in the hospital. Next slide. You realize that the simple, easy to read report sub classification of apnea into obstructive, central, mixed, and unclassified. Obstructive and central, central, there is something wrong with the brain. Mixed is both and is a pulse variation, snapshot of the whole night, which is also very important report. And the report comes as a printer form. It gives you a hypopnea, apnea index, which tells you exactly what we call is a is an index. If the index is higher than 15, it's a serious matter. Next slide, please. Now, how do you measure OSA? AHI, apnea, hypopnea index. 0 to 5 normal, 5 to 15 mild apnea, 15 to 30 moderate apnea, more than 30 is a severe apnea. And this can be done at home. If you have a severe apnea, then you need poly uh, somnography, EEG, 12 lead EEG, and which is an elaborate test and which will tell you exactly where is the problem. Next slide, please. Now, treatment options. CPAP is a gold standard treatment always. Along with CPAP, lifestyle modification, sleep hygiene, weight loss should be advised, patient of type 2 diabetes with OSA. Other things I tell my patients that at night, do not look at TV. At night, do not read your any messages on your iPhone. You must not have visual stimulation just before going to bed. Do not watch TV, particularly the news. It's useless. Some of the treatment options of USA include dental appliances, surgery in select group. Not all patients need surgery. Correction of the anatomical abnormalities. Conservative measures such as alcohol suggestion, smoking suggestion, as a mild nasal decongestants. Your nose passage should be kept. Saline nasal sprays are available. And that is because the mucus plaques in the night can obstruct the passage. And you start snoring because the nose is blocked. But nose blocks don't need sympathetic uh, uh, nasal drops. You can use plain simple saline and that will help you. Next slide, please. Now, mechanism of action of CPAP is basically a air which is forced in your nose. <clears throat> you can either wear a mask or there is something known as nasal pillows, which are very gentle. They fit into nostrils and deliver a flow of air at a particular pressure. And now the machines have an auto adjustment of the pressure. What is auto adjustment? Either the pressure can be delivered at a fixed five 
or can vary from 5 to 17. Now that can be adjusted depending on what is your need. If the patient in the middle of the night does not need that high pressure, the machine reduces the pressure. It's an auto adjustment that prevents the damage due to forceful, you know, uh, delivery of air current in your nostril and the respiratory passage, which can actually cause damage to your lungs. So this is a very, very sophisticated gadgets, which are easily available, not too expensive. And they are auto adjustment pressures. Next slide, please. Now, this are the small gadgets, which are air compliant, which is very important. That means you can carry this small gadgets, which are size of a calculator, and you can fit it in the air. The airline gives you a compliance certificate to carry this and they are battery operated. Sometimes battery carrying is a big deal on board. So that is allowed. You don't have to deposit it with the security. You will say that this is your compliance certificate and the airlines honor those certificates. So there are different types of PAP therapies. The standard is the one which is automatic CPAP, which I've shown you in the middle. There's a bi-level which you need multiple levels and there is a moisturizer in that attached to water chamber as well. And there is a something known as CPAP small gadgets, which you can carry with you on board. Next slide, please. Next slide. The effect of CPAP on type 2 diabetes. Now, this is interesting. Next slide. When a person is put on CPAP. Next slide, please. It reduces the risk of incidence of type 2 diabetes. In a pre-diabetic patient, we have seen that it reduces the kaplan miller curves on the impact of CPAP on the risk of the incident of diabetes patient with the AHI more than 20. Hypopnea index more than 20. If you reduce it, you can reduce the chances of pre-diabetic developing into diabetes. That is the beneficial effect of this therapy. Next slide, please. With CPAP improves HbA1c. Amazing. Mean hemoglobin levels before and after continuous positive and the patient with baseline HbA1c greater than 7%. Groups are compared with treatment stress. And it shows that the patients who put on CPAP machines, the risk was reduced substantially. Next slide, please. Next slide. Yeah. Effect of CPAP on diabetes control, fasting insulin and insulin resistance. It clearly shows there is a significant <coughs> reduction. Next slide. OSA and diabetes complications. What are the complications to the patient of diabetes having OSA? Next slide, please. And this is very important. Is an independent risk factor for hypertension and non-deeper phenotype. People in the sleep must dip their blood pressure. There are two groups of people. The deepers means the one who blood pressure falls down at night. Pulse rate falls down. There's a reduction of autonomic drive. If that doesn't happen, the blood pressure does not dip. They are known as non-dippers. And they are vulnerable to develop many, many problems. Now, therefore, the mean arterial pressure must get reduced. The systolic and diastolic, both the blood pressure must come down during sleep. That is the effect of sleep. It doesn't happen in many diabetics. Next slide, please. So, Presence of OSA is shown to increase the chances of stroke, coronary artery disease, and MI, and heart failure. CPAP has been shown to delay or prevent the occurrence of coronary vascular disease. Amazing. There are a lot of studies which are done. They seen the CPAP machine has reduced the mortality, particularly from atrial fibrillation, which occurs in the sleep or at night, and early morning infarctions. MIs which take place at 4 a.m., particularly 4 a.m., 5 a.m., these are reduced when the patient uses overnight CPAP machine. Next slide. One of the most outstanding effect of microvascular complication, retinopathy, nephropathy, and neuropathy, these are all treated significantly. Microvascular disease also treated with a use properly, intelligently given CPAP machine. Next slide, please. So this is about 
the CPAP machine. Now, I must tell you something very frightening about CPAP, about the sleep apnea. The commonest cause of accidents in the United States is sleep apnea. The truck driver sleeping on the wheel because daytime somnolence and nighttime insomnia. This is worse than alcohol related vehicular accidents. More number of people have died <coughs> because the truck drivers have slept on wheel <coughs> and not slept at home properly. So Chernobyl, then a space uh, shuttle mishap. These are all because of the sleep apnea. The pilots had sleep apnea and that's how it's a major cause of economic loss, major cause of disasters and this can be prevented by a simple test of apnea, hypopnea index and put a patient on a CPAP in an appropriate way. Thank you very much for giving me an opportunity to express my honest and sincere wishes that people should suspect sleep apnea. All the patient above 40, you must subject this to this testing. If you don't suspect, you don't diagnose. You must suspect 48% of the adult population, believe me, diabetic or non-diabetic, is suffering from sleep apnea. 48%. We miss it because we don't suspect. Thank you, Rajiv, for giving